Hey guys, I have on the screen the sinner's prayer. If you have never dedicated your life to the Lord, ask Him into your life, ask Him to forgive you of your sins. The following video is going to hit home that uh, your time is quickly running out. It could be a matter of days, not more than weeks. So anyway, pause the video right now if you've never done that, or uh, to recommit your life to the Lord. Pause the video right now and say the prayer to the Lord. Now on with the video. Jerusalem is ground zero for the apocalypse. All of the end time prophecies center on this very city. And it looks like everything is getting ready to go into play for the fall of 2017, which is the Jubilee year, according to the ancient calendar. A jubilee year occurs every 50 years within a certain time frame on the biblical calendar. Seven years, seven times to get to what is known as the year of jubilee. And the year of jubilee, biblically, is when all deaths were canceled and all the land returned back to the original owner. Uh, many people believe that God will return in a year of jubilee because in Leviticus 25, God says, all the earth is mine, the land will not be sold forever. And so many believe that it will be some year in a jubilee cycle that God will return and reclaim the earth. I live in a Jewish community in the Galilee. And I was given a manuscript concerning the prophecy of a 13th century Jewish sage, a rabbi, Judah the Righteous. He said that for 400 years, eight jubilees, the Ottoman Turks would rule Jerusalem. Then it would be no man's land for one jubilee. And then the next jubilee, it would be in the hands of the Jewish nation. And then the next jubilee would be the beginning of the end time messianic age. In 1217, Judah the Righteous spoke these words. 300 years, six jubilee periods later, in 1517, the Ottoman Turks took Jerusalem. They held it for 400 years, exactly eight jubilees to 1917. That is when General Allenby took Jerusalem. It immediately, under the guidance and the directive of the League of Nations, the predecessor to the United Nations, was labeled no man's land. Exactly the words of Judah the Righteous hundreds and hundreds of years earlier. And for one jubilee, it was no man's land. And then the Jewish nation, which had not been for nearly 2,000 years, took Jerusalem and has now held it in 2017 according to Judah the Righteous, begins the end time messianic age. This is the 50th year or Jubilee anniversary for Jerusalem. But also we have the 70th anniversary of Israel becoming a nation. These are right on top of each other. Could something happen prophetically this year? When we come to the end of September, that is when we are expecting the full-scale invasion in the war against Israel. According to the prophets, and the prophet Zechariah specifically, he told us exactly what he saw by revelation. He saw cylindrical shaped objects, flying objects that have an evil fire offering encased in lead sent from the land of Shinar, which is modern day Iran, Iraq, Syria, against the land of Israel. And these flying containers that he saw 2,400 years ago are the exact dimensions of a modern day Scud missile. And this thing is all ramping up for this full scale war. Yeshua told John to write down the things that he's just seen, the things which are now, and the things that will come to pass in the future. He sees Yeshua rip off seven seals from the scroll, and the events that play out on the earth are cataclysmic. We see death happen. We see a great sword. We see biological warfare, famine, and pestilence, disease. 
we see the sky roll back and clouds roll up that darken out the sun, moon, and stars. Very clearly, what we would think of as thermal nuclear war. You read about cities being destroyed, you know, in a blink of an eye, in an instant, in an hour, uh, destruction comes. You read about the fire, you read about men's skin melting off their bones and things like that. I mean, for somebody who had no concept of really of explosives, and fire like we make fire now in the modern times. I think if you just look at it with a clear mind and say, what was John really talking about when he tried to describe these visions that he had? It's obviously, to me, it's obviously nuclear war. If we're focused on Israel in the spotlight, yeah, there's gonna be nuclear war there. People who study the Middle East, they say the whole thing's like a big powder keg. There's fuses all over the place. We're just waiting for one of them to get lit. Since Israel became a nation, they have fought many wars, and they're always on guard against another war. And if you track any of that news, well, it looks like it could happen any moment. It's that volatile. Iran has said openly, the leader, that when they get a nuke, they are going to nuke Israel. The one nation that the prophets say is going to nuke Israel in the last days. Qatar has one nuclear warhead that we know of. They, they have one but they are in the hands of the radicals that want to nuke Israel. We could see this thing turn around very quickly, and as we see in the book of the Revelation, that this great sword is given, a great sword, and this great sword is going to take peace from the earth and is going to cause people to kill each other. This is the most exciting time that has ever been in the history of mankind. And when these wars start happening and the nukes start flying, it's like, okay, hold on, this is going to be one wild ride, and I want to be here in this city when this whole thing comes down. I want to be here when the smoke clears. There's nothing wrong with us looking at these things and saying, here are these patterns. This looks like this pattern is now all stacking up. 1917, General Allenby takes Jerusalem. 1967, 50 years later, one jubilee. The nation of Israel, which didn't exist in 1917, took Jerusalem. 2017 being the next jubilee. Well, that jubilee also happens to be 70 years from when Israel became a nation in one day, fulfilling the 2,600-year-old prophecy of Isaiah. When we see all these patterns in place, we have to say that this may be the hand of the Almighty. It could be coincidence, but I think we'd be foolish to just brush it all aside as just coincidence. We need to open our eyes and see if the Almighty is not telling us something. What's a sign? You know, they take many forms, but certainly signs in the sky have always been signs from the Father. And there are some amazing things going on in the sky. It's not surprising that people would pay attention to the sky. It is, in fact, half of the environment. One of the things that people notice, besides the incredible grandeur and beauty of something like the night sky, or the majesty and the predictability of the phases of the moon and the sunrises and the sunsets, is the fact that the sky is a convenient source of order. We have seasons on the planet that are just a product of the Earth moving in its orbit around the sun. But here on the Earth, in antiquity, people saw the sun seeming to move through the sky. They saw the moon move fast through the sky and change phases over the course of a month. They saw the stars come and go in different seasons. And those were all keys to survival because those seasonal changes signaled the need or change for food, shelter, clothing, resources. And so just about everybody depended on the sky one way or another. The tradition of using the stars and the constellations and so forth in the ancient Hebrew culture started in Genesis chapter 1. And it says that God himself placed stars and signs in the heavens and the atmosphere. The Jewish people later formed their calendar on astronomical observations and the sighting of the new moon every month from Jerusalem. But 
very interestingly, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Old Testament, calls a series of feasts in the book of Leviticus a moed, M-O-E-D. And these are appointed times that God deals with people on the earth or the Jewish people themselves. In Leviticus 23, the father tells Moses to tell the Israelites that he's got a calendar and he's got appointments on them. And he sums them up, there are seven appointments. There's Passover, there's unleavened bread, there's first fruits, there's Pentecost, there's the Feast of Trumpets, there's the Feast of Atonement, and there's the Feast of Tabernacles. All of Israel's feast days have to do with the phases of the moon. Some of the feasts would be started on the new moon. So the moon is extremely important in the feast days. As a matter of fact, Passover has to have a full moon. The feast days are highly related to apocalyptic events, to the book of Revelation. We cannot understand the book of Revelation or the apocalypse without understanding the feast days. The book of the Revelation is the Messiah fulfilling the fall feast of the Lord. All those things that we were to rehearse that the scriptures speak of uh, from Yom Truah, the day of trumpets, day of shouting, uh, through Yom Kippur and the feast of Sukkot or the feast of tabernacles, it is all there embedded in there and it's all in the book of the Revelation. The creator runs the universe according to his time clock, whether we recognize it, live by it, understand it or not, makes no difference to him. The next feast that needs to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpets, and then after that, the Feast of Atonement, and then after that, the Feast of Tabernacles. Body goes in the shadow of another, or one body blocks out all or part of another. So an eclipse of the sun is when the moon goes between us and the sun. An eclipse of the moon is when the moon goes into the shadow of the earth. And these things happen uh, five or six times a year. They're very ordinary. God said he created the sun and the moon for signs. What greater sign could that have meant but solar and lunar eclipses? While eclipses are natural phenomena, what gives them prophetic significance is when they happen on the biblical calendar and when we look scientifically at the patterns of when they have occurred historically. And back in 2014 and 2015, I originally discovered that there were these four total lunar eclipses falling on the biblical holy days, two years in a row, back to back. So I did research to find out when was the last time this happened. And I noticed the last time it happened was 1967 when Israel recaptured Jerusalem. Hello, these are very prophetically significant. And then the time before that was right after they became a nation in 1948. And then the time before that was 1492, when all the Jews were kicked out of Spain because of the Spanish Inquisition. So all I did was connect the dots between NASA, when eclipses occur, with the biblical calendar, and then it comes to, okay, what is the prophetic meaning? Blood Red Moon is not uncommon in itself, but they are uncommon when they fall on feast days exactly, especially in tetrads, having four of them within a span of a year or two. I think the celestial events are kind of like parables. Jesus taught parables and he hid truths in those parables. I think that's the exact same thing with celestial events. Just as if you're driving down the road and you see a sign that says the bridge is out, it better not be where the bridge is out. It better be a mile ahead to give you warning. So for me, these signs in the heavens were warning us about what is coming over the next several years. The total eclipse is going to be amazing. It's going to be the first time in decades that we've had a total eclipse that's visible over most of the continental United States. Total eclipses happen fairly regularly on the Earth. I mean, every other year, approximately, there's going to be a total eclipse somewhere on the Earth. But, you know, most of the Earth is water. A lot of the Earth is not very well populated. This is the first event in most people's lifetimes where it's visible to millions of people. Almost anyone in the United States could drive and within a day be on the path of totality. So this is a big deal. Every culture for thousands of years have looked at eclipses as a warning from God or from the heavens. 
Well, what you have to do is look at the pattern. In 763 BC, Jonah was sent to Nineveh. Jonah was an Old Testament prophet who was commissioned by God to go to Nineveh. Nineveh is today currently Mosul. It was a very ungodly area, it was pagan, and he was told to go and bring him to repentance. Nona balked at that, and didn't want to go, and rebelled, and went the opposite way. After he is swallowed by what the Bible says is a great fish, he is vomited back up on the beach, and he now goes to Nineveh. And when he finally goes there, the entire city repents, the Bible says, in sackcloth and ashes, including the king. There was a big plague that affected the entire city of Nineveh. As a matter of fact, the king couldn't even go out to war in the spring as kings normally do. This was followed by a civil war, which was followed by another plague. And then in that summer, you have this total solar eclipse that goes over Nineveh. So all the Ninevites, they are scared to death having had a plague, a civil war, another plague, and now this total solar eclipse. Nineveh is recorded to have had the Burr Sagal eclipse of 763 BC. The thing that may have made Nineveh repent uh, could have been that total solar eclipse. Jonah arrives on the biblical calendar the first day of Elul. Now that is going to be around September 1st. And in the Bible, that month is known as the month of repentance. Now what many people don't realize, this warning was a 40-day warning. Well, that leads you to Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which is also the Day of Judgment when God judges the nations. And so here we have, on August 21st of 2017, a total solar eclipse that just so happens to occur on the first of Elul, the very beginning of the month of repentance that is leading up to the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. This has to be more than coincidence. The sun, as far as a total solar eclipse, refers to judgment coming upon the nations. When was the last time we had a total solar eclipse that completely crossed the United States. Did you know it was at the end of World War I? And here we have America involved in World War I. Many people don't realize World War I also began with a total solar eclipse that went all through Eastern Europe through Turkey, and even went all the way through Nineveh. And what do we see happened? The Ottoman Empire is destroyed, and the solar eclipse went right through the Ottoman Empire. So we see a pattern of judgment. Interestingly enough, Jesus said that a generation towards the end, asking about the end of time, Jesus said they will be given the sign of Jonah. Maybe it's talking about an eclipse. And if that's the case, then America needs to take warning. There are some people who just don't listen to reason. Eclipses repeat more or less on the surface of the Earth as the Earth rotates and the Moon goes around the Earth every 18 years, 11 and a third days. The third of a day um, gives the Earth a third of a turn. Uh, so the, each eclipse is in that series, which is called the Saros, is a little further north or a little further south than the last one. And by the time you're through with three or four hundred years, the Earth's surface is covered with the paths of eclipses. We just happen to be in the middle of this one, which is fun for us, but there's nothing really special about it except that we happen to live here. You know, people in history have been afraid of eclipses and thought they sort of, yeah, were foreboding uh, signs of, of things to, to come. And that's where science is helping us. I mean, we're not afraid of eclipses anymore, at least most people aren't. We understand what they are. Um, it's just a simple geometrical alignment. I think one of the things that's happening with the great American eclipse is that there's something following it. 
On September 23rd of 2017, there is an alignment that is happening in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the constellations, which looks like something that John wrote about in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. In the first two verses, he's talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, the wandering stars, which we call planets, and a constellation, which is Virgo. John says that he sees a great sign in heaven, that there is a woman, she is clothed in the sun with the moon under her feet, and she has a crown of 12 stars on her head. But she's also pregnant, but not just pregnant, she's in labor and about to give birth. We know that Virgo would be the woman. The moon will actually be at her feet. Uh, the sun will traverse right by her shoulder, clothing her in the sun. And in her head will be 12 stars. Nine of those will be the constellation of Leo. It makes up Leo. They're always there. But the three other ones that are not there are the syzygy, the alignment of planets. Mercury will align. We will have Venus that's there and also Mars, making up the 12 stars. And we can see that the 12 constellations around the ecliptic only has one woman in it that the sun, the moon, and the wandering stars can travel through. And that would be Virgo. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant. Now how can a sign in heaven be pregnant? There's another planet that has right now been in what we would call the womb of Virgo for several months and it will exit that womb due to what's called retrograde motion, which is going back and forth on September 23rd. What happened in November of 2016, the planet Jupiter moves into the birthing canal in the constellation of this woman, and it stays there for a period of close to 42 weeks, which is a human gestation period. And it doesn't exit until the sign is finished on September 23rd, 2017. If Virgo is pregnant with Jupiter and it's nine months to deliver, exactly nine months, then the question is, what happened exactly nine months before September 23rd? So the UN Resolution 2334 passed in December of 2016, censuring Israel for having any type of developments, any type of settlements in the 1967 borders and that has caused the major firestorm. Those settlements are in those areas that are contested by the Palestinians. That censuring has really given the world a stance against Israel. The UN seems to have resolution after resolution against Israel, the tiny nation that's only the size of Connecticut. And I think you're seeing an anti-Semitism. One of the things that I've noticed is that every time you see anti-Semitism grow in the world, whether it's 1917, whether it's 1939, you usually see a world war. When we see this occurrence of Jupiter going into the womb of, of Virgo, that does happen every 11 years. It's not rare. We know the moon's at her feet once a year, so that's not rare. Uh, what we do see is very rare are these three planets lining up in Leo. As they come in again, this makes this occurrence once every 7,000 years. That is extremely rare. I actually took the time, I went back 6,000 years, and I took screenshots of every single time that the woman was clothed in the sun with the moon at her feet. Because again, that happens every year. But do you have her giving birth? And do you have 12 stars at her head? There's never been a day that the exact same thing that happens in 2017 has ever happened. I also went 1,000 years into the future. It's just not there. This is the year that it seems that John saw. Right down the line, every single thing that's going to happen on September 23rd, factually, is mentioned in a book that's 2,000 years old. This is what Revelation 12 is talking about. And so it's a time marker. This is starting to happen now. And I think if the people are right about this, and I find the evidence rather compelling uh, that they are, I believe we can expect to see some significant activity on or around September 23rd. It's like I tell people, your world can change very quickly. Shock and awe for real. It's very interesting that this Revelation 12 sign, it aligns at the time of the Feast of Trumpets. The alignment will be obscured because the sun will be there. It's happening in the daytime. 
how is this sign going to be seen? How is it going to be observed? It can be observed by astronomical programs, but it's going to be observed very likely by people. Is there any scenario that can allow us to see this alignment in the middle of the day? There are a couple things that have been postulated. One of them was some type of dust that would come from a volcano that still would obscure that sky so you wouldn't see it. It would darken the sky, but it would obscure it. The other one is that some type of cosmic occurrence could come and cause the sun to be darkened. We know it can't be an eclipse because the moon's on the on her feet, so we know that. So it would have to be another another body, another object coming and obscuring the sun. And that would have to enter outside of our solar system. The only way this can happen is the last part of Revelation 12, 1 through 5, starting in Revelation 12, verse 3, you have the appearance of the red dragon. In Revelation chapter 12, it also talks about a great red dragon. It talks about that dragon ready to consume that child once it's delivered. And another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven, and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was cut up to God into his throne. On September 23rd, 2017, this very highly unusual once-in-an-era alignment can be seen in visible light by the naked eye if Planet X eclipses the sun during that morning. In Revelation 12, 1, 2, there's an object called the Red Dragon. And this Red Dragon is the Planet X system. I've seen pictures of it before they were blacked out on sky view. It's a picture that looks like two eyes or two objects, two planets, with a series of smaller satellites around it. It's a very frightening picture. Planet X is a planetary body that has crossed Earth's inner solar system before and caused great havoc in the past and is coming back soon again, sometime in the near future. People have known about it for years. It's been in popular science magazines as far back as the 1950 stories about Planet X. The real hunt for Planet X was the launch of the space probes in the 1970s and the launch of the IRIS satellite in 1983. This is an infrared satellite that was doing sky mapping in the infrared range in 1983. And this absolutely located it and gave definition to it. It was major news on the front cover of US News and World Report. It was in the New York Times, the Washington Post. It was a big story, but nobody paid much attention to it. It has a straight elliptical orbit and has come through and it crosses Earth's path twice. That gives us three fixed points the center of the sun where it pivots from, and two crossings on Earth's path, which is roughly five months apart. It's not going to collide with the Earth, but parts of its asteroid belt and so forth will collide with the Earth. Well, a third of the stars thrown down by the dragon's tail is an asteroid debris field behind this object. It can affect electromagnetically anything it approaches. And a lot of people are saying, why do we have global warming? And they blame it on all kinds of things, hairsprays, fuel emissions. Is Planet X the cause of our climate change? I would say yes, without a doubt. It's affecting our sun. Sun is tilted by extra six degrees. Earth is tilted extra four degrees. Our magnetic north is moving at 12 times its normal rate. We have some anomalies that car Mr. exhaust fumes cannot explain. That doesn't change the magnetic north of Earth. Only another magnetic field can. And that would be another planet. This is a huge system and it will be passing 
10, 12 million miles close to the earth. It will block the sun and it will light up the nighttime sky and this once in a era dramatic set of circumstances will be visible for the Earth's people, will be visible for the Earth's TV cameras, and it will be a fulfillment of the last great sign in the book of the apocalypse. Remember, in ancient times, they didn't have the word planet or comet or any of these modern terms. The most common term in, throughout Asia is fiery dragon of old. Something that's very interesting about the year 2017 is that it seems to fulfill a number of different generational numbers in the scriptures. The Hebrew date of 5777 is the year 2017. That number seven is significant in scripture. All numbers in scripture have significance and symbolism. Seven is the perfect number. It's the number of God. It's the number that uh, we associate with perfection. A triple seven is just like a triple six, 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 which is the number of man, number of evil. Uh, in triad form, it reemphasizes the perfection of God. If we look at 2017 as year zero, and we look at Israel, and what's been happening to Israel years ago to come back into her land, it seems to have started 120 years ago. A man named Theodore Herzl held a Congress in Basel, Switzerland in 1897, in which at the end of the conference, he wrote in his notes that he founded the Jewish state. If Theodore Herzl founded the Jewish state in 1897, the next step that took place was the Balfour Declaration. This happened in 1917. And then the next thing that happened was that the UN General Assembly decided to vote and they voted to create the State of Israel. That was in 1947. Then the Jews started coming back in their land. There was a war in 1948, which is called the War of Independence. They got their land and they declared themselves a state. In 1967, there was another war of which the Jews took back their capital, which they didn't have in 1947 or 48. But you've got everything landing on a seven, 1897, 1917, 1947, 1967, and a Jubilee, which is a special 50 year period to the Jews from 1967 lands us in 2017, of which there are two epic signs in the heavens, which are declaring, possibly, the return of the Messiah. 120 years, 100 years, 70 years, 50 years. And year zero then could only be, counting this way, 2017 would be the beginning of the apocalypse. If nothing took place, I, I just don't see that happening. I can't see that happening. I believe it's mathematically impossible. I, I don't believe in coincidence. The beginning of the end is 2017. The beginning of the end is on and after September 23rd, 2017. The end time messianic age is upon us. The confirmation of the covenant, watch, this fall, will be the day of trumpets. It was a privilege to serve you, and it will be an honor to die by your side in the service of the King of Kings. I have daughters and I have grandchildren, and before going, I'm going to make